We have some pretty big news uh, that was released by The Verge earlier this morning. And it's an, yet another layoff. Um, and just to give, and I want to give some context to a few things that are mentioned in this article, because there's a lot of people out there that don't know what's going on or why it's going on. Um, but also just to give a larger context, we made a video la uh, late last year talking about how like game, like 2023 was a great year for games, great year for gaming or gamers, but not really great year for the developers because uh, last year was almost 10,000 layoffs okay, across the industry. Not just tech industry, but specifically the gaming industry. And uh, Rami Ismail on Twitter kind of ran the numbers here. This is going to be ten, oh, about 10,500 layoffs, give or take, because not every uh, layoff is reported either by former employees or by the employers. So there are some guesstimates here, but roughly around at least 9,000 to 10,000 layoffs last year. This year already, we're not even in, in the second month of the year. It is it is almost halfway to the numbers of last year. And a lot of these numbers come from the big ones. Like, obviously, a lot of people have heard about the layoffs occurring on Riot Games. Uh, we've had people get laid off, of course, from, uh, you know, uh, Rovio Montreal. And now... Now, today, it's going to be Activision Blizzard plus Microsoft. And it's not just the studios you're thinking of. It's also the smaller studios under the Microsoft conglomerate, um, like uh, High Moon. We also do have Zenimax get affected. And this all comes after the recent 69, roughly $69 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard. And of course, before that was the... Uh, multi-million dollar deal for Bethesda slash ZMX Media. Yeah, and th this is the numbers we're dealing with. So let's go over the article because about 1,900 people were laid off today. Microsoft is laying off 1,900 employees. By the way, what's messed up about this is that uh, people who were laid off were not given notice before the article dropped. And the reason why that occurs often in this industry is because the companies want to get ahead of um, potentially any internal leaks or things that might adversely affect investor uh, prospects and stuff like that. So they want to make the announcement to the world before they make the announcement to their employees. So that's the messed up part about this as well. Uh, and you will see, I mean, I, I have it all pulled up, at least the ones I saw on Twitter, and there's probably hundreds more. You know, uh, Lady Devon, she got laid off, and she is a very prominent community manager for Fallout 76. That That's a pretty big deal. Uh, I mean, we look, look at Bungie when they laid off a lot of their QA community managers and other developers you know, who designed art graphics and worked with video effects. And we have people from the Overwatch 2 team that were also laid off. Uh, it's producers and designers and artists. We also have a video effects. At least one person who worked in video effects get laid off from the from Blizzard. Just It just keeps going. And apparently at Sledgehammer Games, which is one of the smaller studios, uh, a bunch of the QA people got laid off. And it's been, I think it's been reported about a quarter or 25% of that workforce at Sledgehammer Games got laid off, which is, uh, which is a, a big deal. Um, level designers got laid off. Uh, people who were working on the back end of the games, gameplay engineers uh, were laid off. People who were working on the uh, very anticipated survival game that was all hush hush behind doors and over at a uh, blizzard were laid off. So that project is now dead. Um, people who are still not laid off as of now have reported losing their entire teams. Like they're the only ones left apparently in their department or their uh, group. People who've been there for over 10 years have been laid off. So it, it's a very big variety of people. Um, it just keeps going. It, it's it's not ending. I expect as you know the week goes by, there will be more and more people talking about uh, that themselves getting laid off. 
Uh, there's also people from working on Call of Duty getting laid off. So every almost like a lot of products, a lot of teams have been affected. It's not just Overwatch. It's not just uh, Fallout 76. It's a bunch of games, a bunch of projects, especially one project that will not see the light of day. Uh, for here, example, again, Blizzard canceled their survival project, which is insane to me because you've already invested millions of dollars into that product. So why are you canceling it? Just because you can't sustain the workforce. And that's honestly, the sustaining the workforce part is also terrible. Like Microsoft closed out at over three trillion goddamn dollars on the market today, earlier today. Three trillion dollars. That means they are now officially more valuable than Apple. So just kind of for a reference, just because it's it's just it's just insane to me these numbers. Um, and there was an article talking I think a couple of weeks ago about how expect the next two years to be really rough for not just the tech industry but for the gaming industry. Like it'll, these layoffs will apparently continue to happen as companies look for ways to increase their profit margins to essentially replace some of the work or sorry labor with AI technology, if applicable. So it's just going to keep going. And this is not the end, unfortunately. So let's keep going over the interview. Um, so apparently 1900 employees gone. That's 8% of the overall Microsoft gaming division. That's just gone. So you have roughly around 21,000 employees left. And this is terrible because, you know, I think I tweeted this to goddamn um, Phil Spencer because he, he said after the acquisition, something about like, you know, this acquisition, this merger, you know, we'll, we'll promote a culture of trust, of inclusivity and blah, 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 the typical uh, PR speak, which I think a lot of people felt hopeful about because uh, at least compared to some other execs, he was showing that uh, he wasn't completely oblivious to gaming or situations involving development ar around games. But I guess he's he's just no he's just no exception to the rule. Um, so how does how does, how does mass layoffs lead to a culture of trust? Because the people who are remaining at these companies, like the morale is going to be dog shit. Like straight up, you're going to be wondering if you're next, and how does that affect your productivity? How does it affect your willingness to put all your all into it, into a product for a company that doesn't give a shit about you? So, I mean, this is terrible. And I've always kind of wondered why these executives like Phil or whoever is still there that were not affected, that will never be affected. Just don't just give up a part of their pay to keep like more people. I mean, there's been companies in the past that have done that. Like the executives have taken docked pay or reduced their pay just to keep more, just to keep people on. Uh, I think Nintendo did it at one point. So uh, I don't know. It's crazy. So, okay, this is the letter, the internal memo from Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer. Okay, it's been a little over three months since the Activision, Blizzard, and King teams joined Microsoft. As we moved forward in 2024, the leadership <laughs> is committed to aligning on the strategy and an execution plan with a sustainable cost structure that will support the whole of our growing business. Together, we've set priorities, identified areas of overlap, and ensure that we're all aligned on the best opportunities for growth. As part of this process, we have made the painful decision to reduce the size of our gaming workforce by approximately 1,900 roles out of the 22,000 people on our team. The gaming leadership team and I are committed to navigating this process as thoughtfully as possible. The people who are directly impacted by these reductions have all played an important part in the success of Activision Blizzard, Xenomax, and the Xbox teams, and they should be proud of everything they've accomplished here. We are grateful for all the creativity, passion and dedication they brought to our games, our players and our colleagues. We'll provide our full support to those who are impacted during the transition, including severance benefits informed by local employment laws. Those whose role will be impacted will be notified. And we ask that you please treat your departing colleagues with the respect and compassion that is consistent with our values, blah, blah, blah. So like they didn't even tell their, the people who got laid off, they got laid off until it was like hours in after the announcement which is again messed up and again i explain why they do that but if they really if they really care about these people as family as the xbox family or as employees they would have given the courtesy of giving them a heads up before they released the announcement or and so forth um 
it's just weird. Uh, you know, people will say, yo, you should have expected, like everyone should have expected this. Obviously, I think a lot of people look to Microsoft as much more, uh, much more of a stable company than the others. But unfortunately, the warning signs were there before the acquisition. I mean, they were laying people off um, quietly. I think a few hundred people got laid off late 2023 from Microsoft. Execs are all the same. Heartless shareholder bootlickers. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Um, and I think it's incredibly disrespectful. And also, it, it, it creates this crunch on the market, especially the job market, right? You're releasing a lot of experienced people into the into, into the wild. And what that does is, what does, what happens to the people coming out of university who've trained to, to develop games, who who are passionate about developing games? You're, you're not going to hire a junior designer over a, like a guy who's been doing this for over 10 years. So that's going to create, I think, issues in the, in, in the job marketplace for the gaming industry for at least the next two to three years, for sure. I don't know how people are going to find work when there are all these layoffs happening, jobs are closing down, there's no room, or if there is room, then the competition is really, really super high. It's a really bad uh, situation all around even for people who have not lost a job or are looking to get a job or a career in the near future. Um, and this is a, cr this, not crazy, but this, this is the weirdest part. I think there's also some like cyberpunk-esque slash corporate-esque uh, skull, da skull duggery here, right? Cloak and daggers. Mike, Blizzard president Mike Ibarra, who has been really adamant really super adamant about staying despite the departure of bobby kotick who by the way got 400 million dollars in severance pay uh which which alone would have probably sustained the workforce uh despite all the other executives a lot of the other executive teams leaving he said this past uh couple months he will need to be dragged out of microsoft okay but Apparently, he's decided to leave the company. I I see this as not him voluntarily leaving. I see him as another corporate ploy, oust, like fucking power play here. I just get this awful feeling that this was a example of them behind the scenes, kind of muscling the past kind of management out. So I think that's what happened here with him. I don't know about Alan Adam. And the couple others who also left alongside Mike Ibarra. But Mike Ibarra is a really strange uh, example here, considering how public, publicly he was uh, saying about wanting to stay. And, you know, of course, it's not just Microsoft. It's not the whole Sony versus Microsoft thing. There's Riot Games in it. Uh, I think they did their severance well, as well as the industry standards uh, go. Uh, Google continues to lay off people. Discord have laid off people. Twitch earlier this month has laid off quite a lot of people. Uh, it, and it just keeps going. And it's not going to stop. And Matt Booty said some bullshit too. So there's also something that I want to focus on here that people aren't understanding. Um, Jess Corden, journalist, was told by multiple sources that Microsoft is laying off the entire internal customer support teams for ABK games, except for a few teams. Microsoft will outsource the rest to external companies abroad. So they're going to look for, again, they're trying to cut down costs. They're going to outsource a lot of things like customer support. Even QA will be outsourced most likely, uh, not internally done. I think um, someone, I I think CNX also said he's heard word of mouth that they are looking to do outsourcing for QA or outsourcing to contractors for future game releases as well. So that's really worrying, especially if you are a gamer concerned about the quality of products. Um, one thing also that Jess Corden has mentioned here is that Microsoft has also shut down entire departments dedicated to bringing Xbox games to physical retail. Why do they do this? Well, I made a video about the Ubisoft executive saying all gamers should be comfortable not owning their games. He, they were t they and Microsoft and other executives have the same exact thought. They want you to pay for access to games 
not own physical copies, not own your games actually. Uh, you need to have an internet connection, et cetera, et cetera, to access your games. They want to go as much as they can into the subscription model, which in itself is worrying, especially when you take into consideration how that works with different copyrights and different companies that might pull their products from those platforms that you paid money for. So this is not surprising to me because there was a recent report that Walmart has been basically asked to dispose of physical copies of Starfield. Starfield, which came out not even a few months ago, and had a lot of physical releases and uh, shipments and distribution work, right? There's a lot of work that goes into physical distribution. And it's only been a few months, and they have asked Walmart to get rid of those physical copies. All physical disc copies. Um, and this is unfortunately a side effect of the digital age we live in, where basically a lot of the games you get are digital. You download it over the internet and you play it. But of course, now they want to control your access to that. Um, so, so again, that part's not really surprising. Uh, funny thing is that Bethesda is the one funding this action. <laughs> Which is like, if you were gonna get rid of physical copies, why, why did you even do the physical copies like it's a huge waste of money here money which could have gone to keeping people and their jobs it's just ridiculous uh i think these companies need to take a serious look at themselves how they hire people why they hire people how they communicate with their employees how they allocate funding because from what i've seen so far it, it's a very big waste of money i mean most of it seems to go to the executives and the other parts seem to go to like just wasting the money such as in this case the fact that bobby kotick stayed after all he did i don't doubt other execs were into it what's the validity of that walmart article validity what do you mean like if it's true it's true it's been confirmed by multiple sources and walmart I, i'm pretty sure con yeah confirmed it now, this is only for Starfield copies, okay? Because previous reports said that the retailer Walmart would stop selling physical Xbox games. However, you also have to take into account Best Buy, not really a competitor to Walmart by any means, I, I feel like in terms of numbers, but they are still big, at least in the United States. Best Buy has begun removing all physical DVDs and Blu-rays. Target has also reportedly reduced the size of its in-store Xbox stands. They want you to go digital. And I think that's an entirely different conversation. Um, the, the, ar the, not argument, the discussion of should we try to stick with physical rather than go purely digital. I think as more and more time goes by, I'm leaning towards physical myself. Like if there's a chance, if there's a way we can like just stick with physical instead of just completely digital. That'd be great uh, for various reasons. But other than that, that's really it. I think the main focus here should obviously be on the people who unfortunately got laid off not even two months into the year. Uh, I'm hoping to go through the, the bookmarked post I've seen and try to amplify people people's tweets that they're looking for a job and, and should. Um, pretty depressing, but it's, unfortunately it's going to continue.